Hello, Dr. Joe here. So, uh, what have I got here? Well, look at that. These are chia seeds. I've talked about this before in the past. And uh, if you love your chia seeds like I do, then I've got some bad news for you. Yeah, some bad news. Well, sort of. Because I'm not going to leave you high and dry. I'm going to leave you with some preventative strategies to stop this unfortunate event from happening to you. So, do not panic. Uh, you know, I've got six preventative strategies that I'm going to be sharing with you. Plus, I'm also going to share with you what the x-ray pattern looks like. Okay, you're going to have a little bit of uh, uh, training if you like. Uh, it's, it's quite interesting, actually. So you're going to see that. So how did this uh, very presentation come about? Well, it's regarding uh, you know, a colleague who shared with me an unfortunate event regarding chair seats. And uh, it is a story of how chair seats formed a concrete-like mass in one uh, unfortunate individual. And this concrete-like mass was actually stuck in the large bowel, okay? In the large intestine, that's where it was. And uh, when this happened, this is a phenomenon we call phytobizor, okay? Phytobizor. Now, you may be wondering, ooh, what is a bizarre? Okay, what is a bizarre? Well, a bizarre is actually an aggregation of undigested plant fiber. Uh, it could be hair, okay, human hair. Uh, it could be seeds, it could be milk proteins, or even big pharma medications. They can form this concrete-like mass in uh, your gut. And, uh, of course, it can happen anywhere along the gastrointestinal tract. Uh, you could have it at the level of the esophagus. You can have it at the level of the stomach. You could have it at the level of the uh, small intestines. And you can also have it at the level of the large intestines as uh, happened here in this very case. Uh, it was trapped in uh, these uh, unfortunate guys' uh, large intestines. And uh, when it happens, uh, the mass is usually trapped in the gut. And it could be in the form of a ball, or it could look like a pebble, or look like a rock. But whatever way it presents, whether it looks like a ball, a pebble, or like a rock, uh, you, you, it, it does present in varying sizes. So um, uh, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not nice at all. And the hallmark of this event is that, and this is what will take you to hospital, is that the mass is usually stuck in the gut, okay? And uh, like I said, it could be at any level. It could be at the level of the esophagus, the stomach, the, the small intestines, the large intestines, anywhere along the gastrointestinal tract. And uh, so if this happens to you, what will you present with? Well, you may end up with tummy pains, abdominal pains. Uh, constipation is uh, very common uh, when it happens. And uh, along with the abdominal pain and constipation, you may have nausea and vomiting to go with it. So, um, yeah, it's not nice at all. It's quite nasty. Um, now, that is a bizarre. Now, if the bizarre is due to an indigestible plant food, we call it a phytobizarre because phyto means plant, okay? So that is what a phytobizarre actually means. Uh, is a bizarre that is uh, the result of indigestible plant food. And uh, in this case uh, that we're talking about, uh, it was due to chia seeds. So it was a chia seeds bizarre. Um, yeah, it, it's, not, it's not nice at all. So how do you prevent this from happening? Like I told you, I'm going to share with you some strategies, six of them. Uh, but before we talk about the, uh, the strategies to prevent this from happening, how about I show you what the X-ray pattern does look like? And uh, this was one case that was actually published uh, in the literature. Let's have a quick look. So what you are looking at now is an X-ray of a patient that uh, came in with abdominal pain, uh, constipation, and uh, indeed vomiting as well. Uh, so you, what you see now is uh, the X-ray showing the bizarre in the sigmoid colon as well as the rectum. It's tracking all the way down here to the rectum. So the sigmoid colon, I describe as the hallway that leads to the rectum, and the rectum is the reservoir before the exit point. So um, you can see this bizarre here, huge one in the sigmoid colon, and uh, is extending all the way down here to the rectum. 
and uh, you can see a bigger one here a bigger bizarre here in the rectum so this patient was taken to the theater all of these were scooped out whilst the patient was uh, under anesthesia so what you see next now is the x-ray of the same patient 24 hours later what happened was the patient had some more seeds in the upper colon that eventually tracked down and uh, you have a smaller bizarre here now 24 hours later, but this one was easily evacuated by way of enema. The patient eventually recovered without any complications. So this is the kind of thing that can happen when people get excited about the benefits of these seeds and uh, they go over the top. Now, next, I'll give you a few cautionary notes to avoid falling into this very trap. So prevention, let's talk prevention. Uh, what can we do? Six things you can do. The first one is that you should never eat chia seeds dry. Please do not do it. Uh, no matter how tempted you are to eat the chia seeds dry, please do not do it. Uh, because if you do it, you could end up like this other individual who had chia seeds stuck in his esophagus. Uh, how did this happen? Well, he was uh, he got too excited and he dry scooped the chia seeds and uh, swallowed them and they got stuck in his uh, esophagus. And of course, he had to uh, go to the operating theater to uh, have this dealt with. So please do not do it. Strategy number two to prevent uh, chia seeds bizarre or phytobizarre is uh, to soak your chia seeds for at least an hour before consuming them. Okay, soak them for at least an hour. And the reason you want to do this is because chia seeds, they're quite hydrophilic. They're going to soak in a lot of water, a lot of moisture uh, to soften them up. So you really want to do that because that process of, you know, hydrolysis of the fiber does aid their passage through the gastrointestinal tract. So please soak them uh, before you eat them. Strategy number three to prevent a phytobizor resulting from a consumption of chia seeds will be to start small. Uh, and indeed, this applies to all, all of the seeds. Uh, start small. And by that, I mean, have just one tablespoonful, uh, especially for people who are not used to consuming plenty of fiber. Uh, just have one tablespoonful of, uh, say, the chia seeds. And uh, let your body adjust. Let your gut adjust uh, to tolerating them. And then uh, if your gut is happy, step it up to two tablespoons. And then... Um, if your gut is happy, uh, you can step it up to three tablespoonfuls and then, of course, four and so on and so forth. But the message here is to start small, okay? Start small. That's what you must do. Strategy number four, and this is so, 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 so important. Drink plenty of water, please. And I've put here one to two liters minimum. <laughs> That's the bare minimum. You should be aiming for about three liters, really. And uh, the reason for this is that fiber is really water hungry. Okay, you know, honestly, fiber is really water thirsty, and you really want to feed that water into the fiber. Otherwise, uh, you will end up with uh, the opposite of what you want. So please drink plenty of water. So so important. I cannot emphasize that enough. So strategy number five to stop us having phyto bizarre is to chew your seeds before swallowing. And, you know, this applies to all of the seeds, you know, flower seeds, hemp seeds, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds. Please chew them thoroughly before swallowing. OK, do not rush them. Honestly, do not rush them. And uh, so that's strategy number five. Strategy number six is to avoid consuming lots of fat with your seeds. The reason for this is fat is known to actually slow down what called gastric emptying. And by gastric emptying, I'm referring to stomach emptying. So, um, you know, the slowing down of the gastric emptying, of the stomach emptying, means that uh, that's going to have an after effect of the journey of, you know, the seeds through the entire length of the bowel. So, um, you know, ideally, you don't want to consume lots of fats with uh, your seeds. So, um, do let me know if you know anyone whom this has happened to. Uh, because uh, when it gets really bad, you're going to end up in hospital. And uh, sometimes, uh, you know, doctors have to intervene uh, to get things moving again. Uh, you know, and the, the worst case scenario is just like in the x-ray picture that I presented to you, 
you end up going to the operating theater. So uh, do let me know if you know anyone whom this has happened to. And also, if you know anyone who has had a paradoxical response to fiber, because fiber is supposed to help you move things along in the gut, uh, but some individuals do have the opposite effect, as in it leads to constipation. And, and the reason usually is because, you know, the person did not consume enough water to go with the fiber. You have to do that because if you don't do that, you are going to have the opposite effect. So if you know anyone whom this has happened to, do let me know in the comment section. Uh, if it's happened to you, do let me know. Um, so um, I'm also hoping that uh, you got some value from this very video. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. Please like the video. And uh, if please share this video with your friends, family, and colleagues. If you've got any questions, any comments regarding the content of this video presentation, go ahead, uh, leave your comments or questions down below. Well, this is Dr. Joe signing out. That's it for this very video. Dr. Joe signing out.